Yes, we're here to uh, talk a little bit about uh, C8, C7. Again, this is for uh, Sharon Kids, Sharon's Kids. Uh, it's a Durham Region Children's Charity that's uh, supported by uh, GM Canada, and we're they're auctioning off a uh, the last uh, C7 built for Canada and the first C8 built for Canada. And we have with us uh, Ted Juchter, Corvette Chief Engineer, uh, Kirk Benyon, uh, Corvette Exterior Design Engineer, Harlan Charles, Corvette Product Manager. Well, hi, guys. Hey, Ron. Well, welcome to the virtual world. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. It's Just great to see you. Nice to be seen. Since Daytona, I think. <laughs> yes, that's the last, uh, the last race I've been to, yeah, which is... Which is unfortunate. One question I have: Why was now the right time to bring out a, a mid-engine Corvette? <laughs> There's no time like the present. Um, of course, Harlan and I have been working on this for quite some time now. Uh, really, since uh, 2005, maybe even a little earlier. We first started talking about it, and uh, <laughs> we realized uh, with the horsepower wars that uh, we're becoming more and more traction limited. 50-50 uh, weight distribution is great for handling balance, but when you start to have uh, these massively powerful cars, um, and that was really happening across a lot of different segments, the challenge wasn't so much creating more power, but how do you get the power to the ground? And so we saw this challenge coming uh, from way back and uh, started talking about, you know, what's the best way to, to meet that? You can do some things to try to put move, more weight on the rear, but ultimately if the engines in the front we already had the transmission in the back so uh but if the engines in the front um there's just so much you can do so the the big step had to be made uh in one fell swoop and uh it was a long process honestly uh, to get everybody on board uh to believe that we could do a great corvette and uh have it mid-engine and i think harlan really did a ton of work explaining how we were gonna take what was great about C5, C6, C7, uh, and then add to it, not instead of those great attributes, take all those attributes and add all the merits of uh, the rear engine and the weight bias that exotic cars uh, had. So it wasn't enough to just go full on into the exotic space, but how do we make you know, the balanced Corvette that we all know and love, how do we do that and get the benefit of putting the engine in the back? And that was, uh, it, it wasn't a day decision. It was a, a very long process working up towards getting uh, agreement from everybody to do it. Awesome. Yeah, I think the, the key, like Taylor was saying, was this was a new type of sports car that I feel that only we're the only ones in the world that could do by combining the things that people love about Corvettes over history, you know, that the, the V8 power and how easy they are to drive and you can be your daily driver and enough storage space to take on a trip but add that to the exotic mid-engine attributes and through great packaging and design uh, we're able to do that and keep things like the removable roof panel uh, now we have a retractable hardtop convertible two trunks uh, great uh, visibility great seating position very comfortable to drive long distances and have that exotic mid-engine design that kirk put together We've always, we've had the desire for a while to to make this proportional change. You know, we've we've had some experiments through the years to 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 look at different things, but um, you know, this this has been a game changer for us. It, it's truly a, a new evolution of Corvette, and more so a revolution with this mid-engine layout. And it's it's made for a very compelling design for sure. Yeah, and I have to give design credit because there's probably every single designer in the building spent their youth designing cars like this you know if you're going to design a really cool looking car this is what you draw and so everybody has these um sort of unconstrained designs you know really wild exotic things but you know harlan talked about the packaging we also had the functional elements too we want to make sure it was easy to get it in and out of um, we had to cool it somehow you know it's very different it would have been much easier if we just said oh we'll we'll, we'll skip the front trunk uh, we'll skip the rear trunk. Let's just put more cooling. So, but we wanted it all. And so figuring out that combination of package and functionality and then being able to wrap it with a beautiful skin that's also functional because it has to do all the arrow work. Um, uh, very, very challenging. 
uh, and you know, kudos to design for uh, being able to wrap all that functional hardware in a functional way and then have the visceral response that you get. If you drive these cars around, people just stop in their tracks. It's amazing to see the, the reaction to it. Now they're a rock truck drive for sure. And I would tell you, you know, we, we started early on uh, aero testing the this proportion, uh, you know, in, in rolling road, wind tunnel and such that um, we wanted to get a head start on the aero package, but we also engaged PME early on as well to where we would meet with them on a weekly basis. Uh, things that they would learn more that were probably more race car driven, we could still dissect and apply to, to this as a street car. And PME, for people who may not know, that's Pratt & Miller Engineering. Um, right. Ron is obviously quite familiar with, uh, but there are partners on the race side that do a lot of the engineering and uh, campaigning of the race car. And as new as the design is, and a big change as it was, I hear so many Corvette enthusiasts saying, you know, you it captures the Corvette character in a mid-engine design. It still has the Corvette cues and, and theme that you know right away and it is a Corvette it's not it could be nothing else far and away far and away the best daily driver um yeah, my wife Linda has driven it and the first thing she noticed was <laughs> forward visibility and mm -hmm. and also the the feel in your, uh, the steering feel was was so much more responsive that I couldn't get her out of the left seat after that <laughs> <laughs> I need to uh I need to know your favorite thing about C7 and C8. Chad, we'll start with you. Favorite? favorite C8. Well, C7, um, my, my favorite thing would have to be the manual transmission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never bought a car for myself my whole life that wasn't a manual transmission. Um, and so I love the fact that uh, top to bottom on the line, we ever have the manual, we had the rev matching. Um, that was awesome. I also, um, you know, I think that the the legacy of that car, I think the last of the C7s, it has, uh, I think it's the best looking of all, you know, it has such an iconic uh, look to it with all the developments uh, in aero and uh, aesthetic developments. Just, it's hard to pick one thing about the C7. <laughs> That's my favorite. On the C8, it's, um, and to be perfectly honest, if you asked me uh, years ago what I liked the most about C7, what I would have said was the bandwidth. It's really good on the track. It's great daily driver. It's you know super easy to drive long distances with. It's got a trunk that's like a mid mid sized sedan. You know, it's just super easy to live with. That's what I would used to say. Um, I could still say that about the the C8. Um, but for me, the C8, and we've talked about it, the favorite thing about it is the way it drives, the way it responds, the combination of ride and handling. There's no other car in the world, uh, to me, that's like it. And uh, it, it's got all this performance, and it, yet it asks less of you than any other Corvette we've ever made. It uh, feels compliant and quiet and comfortable. When you want to go fast, it wakes up and, and roars. It's just... It does um, that whole driving experience, soup to nuts, and every kind of driving is to me is that's the, my favorite thing about the car. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, all Corvettes are beautiful, obviously, throughout time. That's kind of the great thing about them, you know, all the generations. But for me, the seventh generation, I was really proud of. We introduced uh, the driver mode selector, which allowed you to tailor. A lot of the um, car systems, depending on your know, tour, sport, track conditions, and the performance data recorder, we came out in that generation, which we still have today, which is great for, for driving schools as well as people who just want to improve their driving. Uh, those are a couple of features I really like on the seventh gen. The new car, um, you know, obviously driving it, like Tad said, all that stuff. But I mentioned before, I love the the shape of the windshield and the view out the windshield, both interior and exterior. And um, of driving the uh, convertible with the retractable hardtop and how that looks both top up and top down. And plus the flexibility it has to go traveling, doesn't take away any trunk room. It makes it a great car for what you really want to use a Corvette for on the road, as far as touring and having fun in and fun to drive and convertible time. And then uh, 
finally i'll counteract what uh, tad said and said my favorite thing to see it is that paddle shift how fast it can shift i also drove manuals my whole life and i'll and after years and years of driving it i'll never get as good as that just flicking that paddle and how quick that car shifts and and how much fun it is i maybe i'm an outlier i drive manual mode even on the street almost 100 percent of the time and i just feel like i'm always in control of the car and really enjoy it you can tell we love patting ourselves on the back you ask us what our favorite thing is we give you like 10. <laughs> and, it's, it's hard to pick one it is it's really hard to pick we could go on and on about our favorite things all right i would tell you for c7 uh, my favorite would be the ZR1 package. I think that just elevated Corvette uh, just to the highest level ever, um, you know, compared to our world benchmarks in that. But uh, I just think that's that's one of the strongest packages we've ever done in Corvette, uh, including its aero package, its drivetrain. And uh, like I said, that is just a, a fierce car. Uh, when we were back in Spring, uh, in Spring Mountain in, in February, I asked your guys, you know, how much faster or was the CA compared to the, the ZR1? And they took the cars out there and I'll tell you what, that, that ZR1 could haul a, haul a bacon going around that track. <laughs> that was impressive. Yeah. And I, for, for C8, uh, for my favorite would be the exterior sculpture of the car. I would tell you when we get around customers of that, uh, I think people are just in awe of the of the new lines of that car it's not the you know the body exterior isn't any like anything we've done before but it's so unique it's so compelling uh it's great to see people how, how they respond to it and you know, like points uh, my favorite detail of the exterior would be the hidden door handles you know not having a typical standard door handle on the body side you know in, or in the front or the rear and that just having a small slim membrane package in there is highly efficient uh, it's very attractive for the car i mean we want the car to look like pure sculpture and and getting rid of some of those redundant details like that i think really let the beauty of the car shine through as long as kirk and i've been working together we've been trying to get to a hidden door handle finally did it let's see eight <laughs> i'm all, i'm all about the driving part my uh for C7, white manual ZR1. That's uh, first time. First time I drove it at Spring Mountain on the East Track. The uh, I could not believe. Again, a testament to the uh, to the balance, the front to weight, or front to rear uh, weight balance. The with 750 horsepower. The, the forward traction was off the charts good. I mean, I was I was super impressed. That was the first thing that uh, uh, struck me is second gear off of turn five, um, second gear in turn three. Forward traction was uh, was excellent with that. And then and then the, uh, the the work that you all did on uh, the overall balance and stability of the car. It was uh, you know that the aero package. It was a perfect balance for the the uh, cup twos that came out of the car. It was, and it's so much fun to drive. And um, yeah, I just, I got to get one. <laughs> the last, the just last needs a bigger wing. <laughs> it, yeah, you can do that too, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, C8, for me, it's the, the driving position. I absolutely love it. Uh, the exterior styling, gorgeous. Um, but but I'll say the I have never been a fan of convertibles till now. The convertible is just absolutely stunning with the especially with the top down. I you hear that a lot lately. Yeah, there's a lot of people on the team who never would have bought a convertible, but now they're converted. It's like Harlan said, it's beautiful top up, top down. It's got the security. It doesn't take luggage room when you put it down. And the way the top goes up and down in 16 yep. seconds while you're moving up to 30 miles an hour, I tell people it, it's like you're arriving from the future. When you show up there and the car transforms itself, either open or closed, these giant panels swinging in the air, it's it's really magic. When I had some neighbors stop, I, I had a convertible in, the, in my driveway at that, and uh, they were looking at it like it was the new coupe. And then they thought, oh wow, this is a this is really a handsome car. I really like this car. 
yeah, it's a neat coupe in there. And I got in the car and I just operated, put the top down. They were just floored. They jumped back. <laughs> they couldn't believe the mechanism. It was a total surprise to them. <laughs> It's fun to do with the remote. You can put the top down with the remote. Yeah. I, I've caught people, you know, from a law and the remote works really far away. So if you see people admiring the car, you know, in a parking lot somewhere, it's really fun to just surprise them with the top going down by itself. Oh, yeah. I thought that way you start it and it scares them. Right. The starts, I've the done that. You put the top start. down, you wait, <laughs> then you start it. <laughs> Ron, what were you most surprised about the first time you drove the new eighth generation mid-engine Corvette? Most surprised about. Um, I think the first thing that struck me was uh, the quality of the driving position and uh, forward visibility. Um, and then when I got on when I got on track, is uh, the uh, that that's where you want to take it. Um, the uh, yeah the. the Dual clutch transmission was super impressive, and then uh, again, the, just the the overall balance, um, so much stability, and and then and forward traction, uh, incredible. Um, that, yeah, that's again. I want more time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it is for you guys, but it's it, I was being home, basically being home since uh, middle of March. It mm -hmm. had been 33 years since I've gone this long without travel. Going to, going to a race or something. Yeah, it's just. Oh, yeah. Us too, right? I was just going to say the one thing we did miss out on, you're right, about the traveling was all the enthusiast events we go to. Yeah. And, like, for example, Kirk and I always go to, um, we, I, I, unfortunately, I still call it most part, but Canadian Motorsports uh, Park. Um, there and it's really the closest race for us to go to uh and we really enjoy the fans there in canada people there from upstate new york a lot of people from all over canada come as it's kind of the the only race that the corvette uh races in canada the official race team and it's a great track to be be at and we miss talking to all the enthusiasts that we see and then also the museum events Carlisle events, things like that. We've been doing um, Zoom and, and uh, Microsoft Teams type meetings, you know, where we do our presentations with the customers, but we do miss seeing everybody and going to the races as well. Especially so it is this tough. year since, since customers are actually getting their C8s, you know, we've built over 10,000 of them. And so missing the opportunity in the inaugural year to get people's first impressions, you know, right. fresh, with their new car, you know, we've been looking forward to that for 15 years. And then, of course, we have COVID and we're going to have to wait till next year. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Uh, any last words for uh, Corvette fans here in Canada and any, any of the bidders? We'll start with uh, we'll start with Kirk. Well, I tell you, it's a great time to be to be getting these cars and that uh, it's just it's just awesome to have both of those available. It's not often that we overlap these cars you know front to back like this and i think it's a great opportunity uh for for the canadian buyers here and then i go with harlan i you know the canadian motorsport uh canadian tire motorsports park is is kind of my home track as well i grew up about two hours from there and uh so we always enjoy going there as well as seeing all of all of you folks at the watkins Glen event as well those those are two huge track events we enjoy attending uh, harlan yeah, I just like to say what a great uh, charity and a great opportunity uh, for the Corvette history in Canada being represented in the last two generations. And uh, we say we miss seeing all our friends up in Canada. We have some of our best friends and Corvette enthusiasts in Canada we see uh, every year. And so I just wish you all the best. Well, Ron, it's great to see you. Um, it's always great to see you at all the events. Uh, we love getting out to see all of our fans. Honestly, uh, I wish we had more time and uh, more opportunities to visit with everybody in Canada. We do see uh, Canadians coming down to some of the U.S. Uh, events, and it's great to see them there. Um, this is such a great opportunity to own a piece of automotive history, and it's really beyond that. Um, 
Corvette is really a part of popular culture. And so the C change uh, going from a front engine to a mid engine uh, is gonna be looked back historically as being um, a really iconic moment in automotive and popular culture history. And you can see how much attention the car gets. Um, and it's really global, it's a global phenomenon. Uh, the car is gonna be sold internationally and uh, we have incredible enthusiasm all around the world. So um, I'm real appreciative of the fact that you guys are uh, have the opportunity to, to bid on the, the bookends that surround that moment in automotive history. I don't think we have anything equivalent uh, in the US, so that's kind of unique uh, in North America and only available uh, to you in Canada. So good for you, um, take advantage of it and uh, great talking to you at all. Guys, thank you very much. And for Sharon's kids, Corvette fans, bid, bid early, bid often. <laughs>